Hi everybody and welcome to this unit on coastal scrub and chaparral. Coastal scrub and chaparral are the two most common shrubland vegetation types found in California and these two plant communities share some common characteristics. They both have dense shrubby vegetation with adaptations to summer drought and fire but as you'll see these two plant communities are actually quite different. It's also worth saying at this point that many of the most popular native shrubs that we use in cultivated landscapes are found in coastal scrub and chaparral, such as flannel bush, salvias and matilaha poppy that you can see pictured here on the right. By the end of this unit, you'll be able to describe the main visible differences between coastal scrub and chaparral and you'll have an appreciation for the conditions in which plants from these two communities will thrive in cultivated landscapes. So let's take a look at coastal scrub first. Coastal scrub is found in California's coastal zone from just above sea level to about 1800 feet. It's found mainly on steep western and south facing slopes above the beaches. And you can see an example of this in the photo on the right taken along the Tennessee Valley Trail in the Marin Headlands, which are just north of the Golden Gate Bridge. Coastal scrub can also be found, though, in areas away from the coast, where the marine layer penetrates much further inland to foothills and canyons. A lot of the coastal scrub that used to exist on less steep slopes has fallen prey to urban development. It makes prime residential real estate because it usually offers ocean views, which is high, highly desirable. Areas of Santa Cruz, Soquel and Aptos are built on what used to be coastal scrub. Like coastal strand, which it's sometimes adjacent to, coastal scrub is exposed to salt air, summer fog and strong winds. And its proximity to the ocean, the substrate, latitude and elevation are all factors that influence changes in the distribution and species composition of coastal scrub along California's coast. In Southern California, coastal scrub is usually called coastal sage scrub because it has a lot more salvias than we have in Northern California. They have black sage, salvia mellifera, white sage, salvia apiana, and purple sage, Salvia leucophylla, which you can see in the photo on the right, growing at a native plant nursery in Moss Landing. The shrubs in coastal scrub tend to be between two and six feet tall. Their leaves are often pliable and thin and quite soft, and the botanical term for this is Malacophilus. This characteristic of soft leaves gives coastal sage scrub its alternate name of soft chaparral. The roots of plants in coastal scrub are relatively shallow and typically about half as deep as those of chaparral. Active plant growth usually starts immediately following the early rains in November and December and continues through the spring. Coastal scrub has a higher herbaceous component than chaparral. And common herbaceous plants in Santa Cruz County include yarrow, Achillea millifolium, everlasting or ladies tobacco, wallflowers, soap root, horkelia, and California bee plant. Common shrubs in Northern California coastal scrub include coyote brush, deer weed, sticky monkey bush, California sagebrush, bush lupin, and coast buckwheat, Areogonum latifolium. As mentioned earlier, coastal sage scrub in Southern California includes more sages, such as Salvia apiana, white sage, which you can see on the far right, and which is also found in Chaparral in Southern California. California sagebrush, Artemisia californica, is also a common shrub, and there are several species of mallow too such as the pink flowering chaparral bush mallow, Malacothamnus fasciculatus, that you can see on the right. Like chaparral, vegetation in coastal scrub has evolved adaptations to drought to enable it to survive the long dry summer of California's Mediterranean-type climate. 
Plant leaves are often grey or light coloured, which reflects sunlight and reduces water loss by preventing the leaves from becoming too hot. The leaves of some plants are hairy, which reduces wind speed over the leaf surfaces and also traps moisture, again reducing water loss. Examples of plants with hairy leaves include lizard tail, Eriophyllum stichatifolium, coast buckwheat, coyote mint, and bush lupin. Some plants are drought deciduous. They reduce their metabolic function in the summer and either drop all or most of their leaves in response to the summer drought. Deerweed, Acmispon glaber, pictured on the far right, drops all of its leaves, leaving just a clump of bare, leafless, wiry stems until the winter rains start, and then it produces new foliage. This is something to bear in mind if you're using this plant in a cultivated landscape, and it's good to place other plants around it to disguise the bare, wiry stems in summer. Sticky monkey bush, Diplocus orontiacus, doesn't lose its lower leaves, but they do die and then persist on the stems, looking brown and crispy, which isn't particularly attractive when you're using this plant in cultivated landscapes. So again, it's something to bear in mind when you're designing a cultivated landscape with California natives. Some plants produce two sets of leaves. Both sets are present during the winter and spring rainy season when plants are putting on most of their vegetative growth and blooming. One set of leaves, which is usually larger, is then dropped in response to summer drought. This characteristic is called seasonal dimorphism and can result in a reduction of water loss by as much as 80%. Salvia leucophylla, purple sage or gray sage and California sagebrush are examples of plants that have seasonal dimorphism. The leaves that are dropped in response to the summer drought are then replaced again during the winter rainy season. Another adaptation to drought is that the leaves of some species in coastal scrub are highly aromatic and full of volatile oils. On hot days, the fragrant oils evaporate, which cools the leaves. And examples of plants with volatile oils in their foliage include California sagebrush, Artemisia californica, and coyote mint, pictured on the far right here, Monadella villosa. The volatile oils in these plants also make the leaves less palatable, less palatable to browsing herbivores, such as deer. So let's look now at chaparral. Chaparral covers about 8.5 to 10% of the state of California, and it's most widespread in the transverse and peninsular ranges in Southern California. But as you can see on the map here, it extends up through the coast ranges into the Klamath Mountains in the north and then lines the western foothills of the Sierra Nevada. Chaparral often integrates with other plant communities such as coastal scrub, oak woodland and grassland. In the Sierra foothills, Chaparral gives way to evergreen forest at higher elevations where water availability is greater. Chaparral typically occurs on soils that are poor in nutrients and are very freely draining. These are important factors to remember when you're using chaparral plants in cultivated landscapes. The plant assemblages in chaparral vary across the distribution of this plant community, with the driving influence behind these variations being, as the, being the same as other plant communities. Climate, soil water availability, and soil type, or the composition of the underlying rock and their influence on nutrient availability. Chaparral is often subcategorized according to the dominant plant species, the soil type, or microclimate. And examples of this include manzanita chaparral, serpentine chaparral, and maritime chaparral. The unifying features across these different types of chaparral are the physical characteristics of the dominant shrubs and their adaptations to fire and long summer drought. As I mentioned in the previous slide, 
maritime chaparral is a subcategory of chaparral. Maritime chaparrales found along the California coast from northern Santa Barbara County northwards to Sonoma County. And it's the type of chaparral that we have in Santa Cruz County. Maritime chaparral usually occurs within 6 to 12 miles of the coast, and it's strongly influenced by the cooling effect of summer fog, unlike the hotter chaparral communities further inland. A lot of maritime chaparral is threatened by development pressure because of its closer proximity to the larger urban areas along the coast. In Santa Cruz County, maritime chaparral is found on the hottest and driest slopes of the Santa Cruz Mountains, where manzanita, chemise, buckbrush, wartleaf ceanothus, bush poppy and black sage are really common chaparral plants. And one of the best places to go and see all of those plants that I just mentioned is on the Woodrat Trail at Quail Hollow County Park. In the photo on the right here, you can see a shot of maritime chaparral that was taken at the Bonnie Doon Ecological Reserve. And you can see silver bush lupin, rush rose down at the bottom with the small yellow flowers, and brittle leaf manzanita with its bronzy new growth in the top left hand corner. So let's look now at the typical physical characteristics of the shrubs found in chaparral. Like coastal scrub, chaparral is characterized by a dense shrub layer, which is almost impenetrable. In the photo, you can see the dense shrub cover of maritime chaparral at Bonnie Doon Ecological Reserve that would be virtually impossible to hike through if somebody didn't maintain the trails. The shrubs in the photo here include Ceanothus, Arctostaphylus, and Picaringia montana, the chaparral pea, with its distinctive magenta flowers. Chaparral is typically taller than coastal scrub, and it's sometimes referred to as hard chaparral because of the shrub's stiff stems and sclerophyll leaves. Sclerophyll means hard leaf, and is a type of leaf seen in chaparral plant communities in all five areas of the world that have Mediterranean type climates. Sclerophyll leaves have a thick waxy cuticle and feel hard and leathery. They're often light green or greyish in colour to reflect sunlight and are evergreen, unlike a lot of the shrubs in coastal scrub. They generally don't fall off or shrivel up during the dry summer months. Sclerophyll leaves have a particularly long life compared to evergreen leaves on non-sclerophyll shrubs and often live for around two years. This helps plants to conserve energy during the long dry summer months when they're less physiologically active. Chaparral sh shrubs have deeper root systems than shrubs and coastal scrub, which enables them to survive in rocky soils that are poor in nutrients. The majority of chaparral shrubs bloom and put on their vegetative growth for the year in spring when growing conditions are ideal. The soil moisture is relatively high from the winter rains and air temperatures are warm. The blooming season isn't just limited to spring though, it actually extends over around six months, sometimes more, as a result of when some plants produce their flower buds. Manzanitas are usually one of the first shrubs to bloom in chaparral. They typically bloom in midwinter, then they produce their vegetative growth immediately after blooming, while there's still plenty of moisture in the soil and before it gets too hot during the dry summer months. After the vegetative growth has finished for the season, flower buds for the following year are produced. It's often easy to think these flower buds are the remains of the previous year's dead flower stems. In the photo on the right that was taken on April 15th, about 10 weeks after the shrubs finished blooming, you can see some of the fresh new vegetative growth on a Bonnie Doon manzanita, Arctostaphylus sylvicola, at the Bonnie Doon Ecological Reserve. And these lighter grey areas here are the new foliage that's just starting to be produced. Other species, such as chemise, produce their vegetative growth early in the rainy season, and then they flower right at the end of spring or into early summer in June and July. 
The flower buds of these late blooming species are also produced at the end of the vegetative growth cycle, but unlike manzanita, they then bloom immediately. The result of these differing growth patterns and timing of flower bud production is that the blooming period can extend over six months or more in chaparral. And this, of course, provides a long season of pollen and nectar for insects that feed on these plants. Chemise, Adenostoma fasciculatum, is the most abundant shrub of chaparral. It's often seen growing in pure stands and it's easily recognizable by its bundles of small, dark green, needle-like leaves and very upright, stiff stems. These stiff, slender stems usually grow from a burl and chemise re-sprouts vigorously after fire. And you can see this happening right now if you go for a short walk at the Bonnie Doon Ecological Reserve. Chemise is really long lived and can live for up to a hundred years. Many of the most popular California native shrubs for cultivated landscapes are found in Chaparral. And you can see some of them pictured on the right here with this very dominant white and yellow and gold and, and purple color theme. We've got Manzanita, Bush Poppy, Ceanothus, Matillaha poppy, salvias, flannel bush and mallows, and some of the buckwheats, which we haven't talked about yet in class. So that's the end of the introduction to coastal scrub and chaparral. Let's finish up by quickly summarizing the information that's been covered in this video lecture. Coastal scrub and chaparral are superficially similar. They're both plant communities dominated by shrubs which form dense thickets of vegetation. But there are significant differences in the physical characteristics of the dominant shrubs in these two vegetation types. In Southern California, coastal scrub is usually referred to as coastal sage scrub. Coastal scrub is found close to the coast and is strongly influenced by coastal winds, salt and summer fog. The shrubs in coastal scrub tend to be between two and six feet tall. They're relatively shallow rooted compared to the shrubs in chaparral and their leaves are soft and pliable. Most of them bloom and put on most of their vegetative growth in early to mid spring when the soils are still moist and daytime temperatures are conducive to plant growth. Coastal scrub usually has a much higher proportion of herbaceous plants compared to chaparral. Plant adaptations to summer drought in coastal scrub include drought deciduous foliage, both partially and fully, and seasonally dimorphic foliage. Other adaptations include glandular leaves with aromatic oils, light colored leaves, and hairy leaves. Chaparral is the vegetation type that's characteristic of all five regions of the world that have a Mediterranean type climate. It has a wide dis distribution in California, where it's found on hot rocky slopes of most of the mountain ranges in soils that are poor in nutrients and very freely draining. Like coastal scrub, chaparral is dominated by dense populations of shrubs, but the average height of these plants tends to be much taller in chaparral. Chaparral shrubs typically have deep root systems, stiff woody stems and sclerophyll foliage. And the peak season for vegetative growth and blooming for most shrubs in chaparral is in early to mid spring. But some shrubs like manzanita bloom earlier in late winter because their flower buds were initiated in the previous growing season. Other shrubs such as chemise put on vegetative growth during spring then bloom immediately in early summer. In this way, the blooming season in Chaparral can extend across six months or even more. Many of the most popular native shrubs for cultivated landscapes are found in Chaparral. So their preference for nutrient poor, very freely draining soils is a really important thing to remember when we're using these plants in cultivated landscapes. That's the end of this video lecture. Give yourself a pat on the back and go take a break. When you're ready, return to Canvas and take a quiz to check your understanding of the lecture material that you've just heard.